when you were growing up, you know, how many uh, other female artists did you have to look up to compared to how many female artists there are now? When I was younger, like when I was like eight, no, wait, I'm lying. Like when I was six, seven, six, seven, eight, there was a lot of different female rappers. And then there was a time that there was no female rappers at all. Like it's like I had to keep replaying songs from the early 2000s. Like I have to keep replaying it, replaying it, replaying it because for a while there wasn't no female rapper. And then there was one female rapper that dominated for a very long time. You know what I'm saying? And and she did pretty good. She's and been still dominating. So now it's like more and you never you never know if there is ever going to be a drought. You never know when people get tired of all the female rappers or like people just stop I don't know, promoting them. Because I don't know what happened in that in a time period where there was like none at all for a hot minute. So you just never you just never know the the prediction. Maybe there will be a lot. Maybe there's going to be a time that people just get tired of it. And then there might be another rapper that just come and just take it over. You, you just never know. You know what I'm saying? Like we cannot, we, we never know. Well, I think you made a good point earlier about how Instagram has really helped people to take control of their careers. So, ladies, how do you guys feel about the next five years in terms of females in rap? I think it's only up from here. Like, we done, we done turned the tables all the way around, and I feel like it's only going to be more and more. Like, every day it's a new female rapper going viral on the Internet, so. The future is female. It, especially, you hit it right on the nose, like, growing up, how many how many female rappers we had to, to you know, look at. And now look at the, the kids now. They got a lot to choose from, and we all different, and we all from different places. We all rap about different things and dress different, wear our hair different. So I feel like it's only up from here. Rosalia, who's in the video for WAP, she really wanted to make it, and she couldn't, but she did want to submit a question. I didn't even know she was going to be in this thingy thing. <laughs> Hola, ¿cómo estáis? Um, me hubiese gustado mucho estar en la llamada, pero ha sido imposible. Estoy en Puerto Rico, ha habido una tormenta y la conexión era imposible. Pero he podido grabar este vídeo porque me hacía mucha ilusión hacerle una pregunta a Cardi. And the question is, if you were to start your career again, from the beginning again, knowing what you know now, what three pieces of advice would you tell yourself? Ya me dices. Always read your contracts. It doesn't matter how expensive. If you got to spend 30, 40, 50, some crazy bands on a lawyer, you got to spend it. Don't go with a lawyer that, I don't want to talk too much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, invest in a lawyer to do your contracts, because that's the most important shit ever. Like, you could fuck up, you could do this, you could do that. Contract. That's something that you could, that you just have to make sure you have a professional reading and make sure that um, it's not a lawyer that's just trying to make a quick buck. Like, it's like, listen, nigga, you're going to lock me in, so you got to make sure that this shit is convenient for me, 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 me. So invest mm -hmm. in that. Focus on yourself. I wouldn't do anything differently, really. Like, shit, whatever the fuck I did, I did it right because I'm, 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 I'm doing I'm higher. <laughs> like, what advice would you guys have for dealing with social media? Of course, it's like a very important part of your career in terms of, of building your brand, but there's also so much negativity. You know, people mm -hmm. being able to hit you directly and make so many comments, it can really start to affect a person. So, what advice would you guys give? Like, what have you practiced when it comes to dealing with social media? Shit, I'm still trying to learn. It's been years and, I, and I'm still trying to learn. Shit, I still be responding to these motherfuckers. Suck my dick. <laughs> every day I got the Frank stand. Like, every day I got a big Frank stand, like, throwing glizzies at everybody. Because every day there's a lie. Every day they're trying to turn on you. Every day this, mm -hmm. this, and that. Like, I told you, I got five different cancel parties a year. Niggas cancel me all the fucking time. Just keep it going, keep it moving. If you seem that something is like getting out of control, just just stop responding to it. Stop responding to it. Go ghost for like a week. Come back, pop out. Mm -hmm. I still need advice. People, I still need advice. And it's been couple, like three, two, three years. I still need advice because, like I said, I throw glizzies like this. Suck my dick. 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 Yeah, I feel like I definitely don't got it down packed yet either. But 
um, I came from a TV show, so like it would the social media and commentators and just people with their opinions, like it was outrageous. So um, if I if I had advice for myself, I would tell because I was young too. I was sixteen when I did that TV show, so. I was like really feeding into it. So my advice to myself would have been to like have more tunnel vision. Like I was I was young, but it's not an excuse. Like I fed into a lot of the negativity. Um I try to do better now, but I still don't got it all the way down back. <laughs> but but I'm a lot better than what I used to be. You really gotta have tough skin to you be do. a public you figure. Do. But see, I've been I had tough skin since elementary, since middle school, since high school, I always was in, in school for roasting people. So I learned how to laugh at myself. When somebody say, oh, bitch, your ass is square. I be like, you is right, it is kind of square. I'm gonna get some surgery. Like I laugh at myself because a lot of shit that they say be funny as fuck. Bitch, I do be looking weird half the time. So it's just like, you gotta learn how to laugh at yourself and, and just look at everything like a joke. Because if you don't, you will have no low self-esteem. You'll hate yourself. Like you really gotta, learn people skills and laugh at the shit that people say. It's, it's certain things though, because you know what I'm saying? Like if, if anybody try to say something about my looks, I be I could roast motherfuckers. Like I sometimes bitches need to be lucky that I became famous or something because now I will fight y'all and roast y'all. Like I will really yes. hurt bitches. Spin I will have <laughs> the bitches crying in the corner. Like the way I roast bitches, I could look at you and I got three jokes already. Like facts of the, of the dome, like really quick. It's just certain things though that it's like, it's not even about yourself. It's just certain lies that people will make up that it just will be like, uh, no, yeah. no. Like it's like, you just, you just feel like you got to respond and, and like, and like mm -hmm. cut it. And then people just do crazy ass shit. Like motherfuckers the other day where uh, somebody online fucking put this address of a place that I was staying at and they was talking about this where your, her daughter be playing, I'ma go in there and I'ma kiss her. I had to lock them motherfuckers up. Like, nah, you going to jail, you going to prison. Fuck is you talking about? So a certain thing, I know that y'all gonna go super mainstream and one day y'all will see the type of crazy shit that people do online that is just mm -hmm. more about the way they talk about your body or the anything. It's just some certain things are just bizarre. Sometimes people are just trying to paint a whole fucking narrative about you. Sometimes I be waking up and I be like, fuck I did now. Like, I know I ain't this shit. Mm -hmm. What I did now? Mm -hmm. Oh, hell no. There's a whole lot. Let me, let me reply to it because a, a bitch ain't mm -hmm. did that. So that'd be the problem. It's interesting that you say that when you have a record like Clout and you're talking about all the things that people will do for fame for just a little bit of recognition, I don't think it registers to a lot of people once you get on, once you get some of that fame, how much of your privacy that you lose. And it's not just you, like you said, then your family becomes involved, which is a little bit scary. You know, can things that people say prepare you for dealing with that, Cardi, or do you feel like you just sort of have to experience it and maneuver through as it happens? You got, you just got to experience it. I'm telling y'all, mm -hmm. I'm telling y'all, y'all just got to experience it because it's, when you hear it, when you see it, when you, you when you see it happening to other artists, you be like, oh, thank God it ain't me. But when it be you, it be like, Lord Jesus, what the fuck, fuck is wrong with people? This niggas is crazy. Before we go, uh, real quick, just like, what was your favorite moment uh, filming in the WAP video? Meeting Cardi. Yeah, probably, yeah, probably meeting Cardi because it was like we all walked on set together and then um, Cardi was right there and she was like cheering us on and stuff. So it was like, it was cool. And that moment I was having like a little panic attack. Even when that like, when my team was saying like the girls are here, you gotta go downstairs. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my God. <laughs> Lord, hold on, give me one second because I'm a little, I don't know, it's so hard for me to do eye contact and everything, but I was just, I was really excited to see all the girls. They look so sexy, they look so pretty. On some G shit, like, it really means a lot to me that you guys are in the music video. Every, every um, artist, every influencer, everybody that was in the music video, it means a lot to me. I haven't put out a song, like, in nine months, and when you don't put out music in, in nine months, people on social media will make you feel like, you're doing something bad or like you went away or this, this and that. Like they will make you feel really down, like you ain't shit. People that I think they are so dope 
and they think that I'm dope, I just be like, oh my gosh, they think I'm dope. Like they will do this for me. Like I, I can't, I can't believe it. That shit really makes me feel really, really good. Like I'm really degular like all of y'all. I'm, I still haven't been used to this, this life. Cause like I said, I just don't really be going out much. So I always get, I don't know, like struck. Like I'm always struck. So it just really meant a lot for everybody to be in this video. Like this is a big, important video for me. It's a big, important song. I feel like I'm back in 2017 cause I haven't put out a song in a long time. So I feel like I'm rebirthing myself or something. Like, I don't know what it is, but I just, <laughs> my nerves been really crazy. Like shit is crazy. It, it, it just made me feel good.